Hello and welcome to Tank and AFV News. My name's Tom and today I'm looking at a couple books. These are review copies that were sent to me from FWD Publishing. Uh, these are the works. Uh, FWD is owned and put up by a fellow named Andrew Hills, who um, I got to meet last summer. I uh, got to talk to him for a couple hours. He gave me a copy of his, at that point in time, his Tanks of Tog book, which I did a video review on um, earlier, or late last year. And uh, this obviously is his most substantial work to date. These two that we're looking at today are smaller, um, but nonetheless interesting. Uh, the first one is the provisional handbook of the Chaser Mark I. Uh, now, this takes more commonly known as the Whippet uh, or the Medium A. Um, and this was a British World War I tank that came out right toward the end of the war. And it was the British first attempt at a faster tank, something that would be more in line with um, what would later be called a cavalry tank or a cruiser tank. Um, it wasn't considered that at the time, but it, it, it's sort of the precursor to that because they had the larger, you know, the rhomboid-shaped uh, tanks that were really sort of the forebearer to the infantry tanks. Um, you know, they're slow, they're heavy, they help the infantry get through the trenches this was going to be something that was going to be doing the exploitation mission because um, it could go eight miles an hour which was considered quite fast for the time period um, now I'm assuming anybody who buys this is not buying it um, because they need it as a reference for their own whippet tank um, as far as I know there's only five left and they're all in museums or owned by governments so odds are you don't have a whippet tank in your garage nonetheless it's still interesting to learn how um, this thing operated. So if you are interested in uh, early tank technology, uh, this has um, you know some inf interesting information in it because it is such a you know these early war early uh, World War One tanks are <laughs> from a technical standpoint pretty darn weird. Probably one of the most interesting features of this is it had two engines and the vehicle is steered in part by um, throttling up or down one of the engines. Um, since each engine provided power to us uh, to one track so th that's explained in detail here um you can also go watch david fletcher's uh, tank chat video on, on the whippet um as always all those tank chat videos are, are very worthwhile um, but this is fun if you you really want to get into the the weeds of, of the technical matters of the mark one so this one's available on amazon i know i think it's like 12.99 um for the hard copy, um, or you can get it in a digital version. I think it's even free for the, was it Kindle Unlimited or whatever that program is. Um, the other one he sent me um, is part of a series called Pioneers of Armor. Um, it's the English spelling. So Andrew, he lives in the United States, but he's from Great Britain um, originally and obviously prefers the English spelling. Um, I am less of a fan of uh, U's that don't do any good. Uh, just A-R-M-O-R -R works well for me. But um, that said, uh, Robert McPhee was uh, known primarily as an airplane uh, uh, developer. So in the very early days of aviation, before World War I, he had developed his own monoplane. Um, and uh, that's primarily what he's remembered for. But during the war, he um, clued, on, clued in on the idea of a tracked armored vehicle for getting through the trenches and whatnot, and came up with some design ideas. Um, and he was involved um, with early armor design, although none of his particular models got adopted. You can see, there's some, so the book's primarily talks, but there's some images. So here's one of his early design ideas. Um, as you can see, it's basically an armored box. Here's, here's another one, which looks quite a bit like Little Willie in a lot of ways. Um, it's even got the, that sort of, the, the trailer wheels there for, steering, uh, which a lot of the early English tanks had, and it, never, it was quickly dropped, it wasn't the best idea. Later on he had, so here's another design, this one's quite a bit more ambitious, this larger vehicle with two sets of tracks, um, and then this even more exotic creature here, which had sort of uh, two sets of the back, and then this front one, and then one in the very front, sort of for, I would assume, for getting out of navigating inclines and hills and trench sides and whatnot. So, interesting uh, read. You know, somebody I had no idea existed, frankly. Um, he doesn't get mentioned much in the books that are on early armor development, partly because his designs, he wasn't part of the team. Uh, his work didn't tie in directly with the vehicles that were produced. 
Um, and the book sort of addresses, you know, the question of how how much influence did his ideas and designs have on um, what was going on in British tank design overall in that period. Uh, so if you're interested in, in some of the different figures involved in early British wartime tank design, um, this you'll find this uh, an interesting read. Certainly it's something that, as far as I know, hasn't ever really been looked at before. So it's always fun to see people uh, going out and doing the work to find out some more information on some of these lesser known figures. Because in general, um, you know, a lot of stuff gets written about the vehicles themselves, sort of less so about the men um, who were involved in designing these things. Uh, so we thank Andrew for these copies and for all the work he's done uh, for, uh, for these books. Like I said, you can find them on Amazon um, if you're interested. So I will put links in the video description. And uh, thank you, and we'll catch you on the next one.